Psalm number 95, the scripture says, O come, let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our Maker. It's scriptural, isn't it? That's why we have church every Sunday. We have an altar, the scripture says, in the book of Hebrews, chapter, uh, I believe it is, chapter 13. We have an altar. Praise the Lord. This morning, we've been honoring our bus workers. I want to speak on the bus ministry, if that's all right with you this morning. I want to honor the bus workers by finding the first bus captain and the first bus kid in the Bible this morning. Here we are. I know it's my dad's favorite part of the Bible to preach in, and he's preached it so many times. I could entitle today's message, The First Bus Kid. Or I could entitle today's message from verse number 11. He shall eat at my table as one, listen to this, as one of the king's sons. I'm a child of the king, a child of the king. With Jesus, my savior, I'm a child of the king. Never underestimate one of these little children that come in on the buses, even one of the adults like myself that come in on the buses. Let me tell you why. God can change and rearrange and transform their life to serve the true and the living God. All things can be passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Young people, let me say to you this morning, the sky's the limit. With God, he can do all things. We believe in an omniscient, omnipotent God. He's, he has all power. He can help you through this life. He can help you in the life to come. Praise the Lord. David had made a blood covenant with his friend Jonathan. Jonathan was in line. He was the king's son. He was in line to the throne uh, in, in uh, succession to the throne. But we know that he loved David so much he knew that God's power was on David. He knew that David had been appointed and anointed as the new king of Israel. Even though his daddy was the king, uh, Jonathan had more allegiance and Jonathan had more, more loyalty to David than he did his own father. Father. Why? Because blood's not thicker than water. Praise the Lord. They had a blood covenant between Jonathan and between David. Praise the Lord. He knew that he would always love this man. He said, whatsoever thy soul desireth, I will even do, do it for thee. He took off his coat and gave it uh, to David. He wanted to be a friend of David. Do you have a friend this morning? Maybe we don't have as many friends as we should have, but can I tell you there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother? There's a friend that will always be there for you. He's promised never to leave you nor forsake you. Praise the Lord. This love that Jonathan and David had surpassed even the love for women. Now, this wasn't some kind of weird, funny, fuzzy kind of love. No, no, they had, no, no, that wasn't the kind of love they had. No, Jonathan just recognized the kingship. He recognized the royalty that was running through the veins of David because God had touched David. You see, it doesn't matter who you are. You'll find over there about David when he was chosen to be king. You remember he was least of all the boys of Jesse. But God said, uh, I don't look on the outward, I look on the inside. Boys and girls, it don't matter where you start out. It matters how you finish. And God can change you and God can save you. And God can rearrange your life. And the very course and nature of your life can be changed forever throughout all of eternity because of the decision you make for Christ. I want to say first of all that Mephibosheth, remember his mother fell and he was crippled by a fall. He was crippled by a fall. But guess what? So was I and so was you. The Bible says, as there's written, there's none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Lord. That's me, and that's you. I think wrong, say wrong, and do wrong. And here's the worst part. It's most of the time I don't think right. Do you? <laughs> we need God's help in this matter, don't we? Hey, Mephibosheth was poor. Uh, he was uh, uh, down in Lodabar. He lived down in Lodabar. My goodness, I've been in those poor states, haven't you? We're living in the poorest state in the Union. I'm from Arkansas. I think we're under Mississippi. I don't know. We, we run neck and neck every year. Who's going to be the worst? He's going to be the poorest. I know one thing. In a small, poor, rural town in Arkansas, God got my attention. Amen. I'm talking about out there picking cotton, chopping cotton, uh, tromping cotton. Brother David, you know about these things. He's from Greenville. God can take a little old poor uh, child. God can take uh, somebody that never had anything. You see, I believe you appreciate it 
when you don't have anything, uh, when, when things are taken away from you, you know what? You appreciate a whole lot more when you do finally get something. And that's the way we need to be. Young people, always be thankful. Always respect your uh, elders. Always give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Amen. His mercy endureth forever. If you just understood, young people, this morning, how much God really loves you. God loved this little boy named Mephibosheth. He was crippled, but yet, even though he was in a wheelchair, even though he was handicapped, did you know it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. God, look, he's not, he's not looking for your ability. He's looking for your availability. And, and God loved this young man. And matter of fact, uh, the, the way it usually goes that when a king gets through with his kingship, they go out and they hunt down all of those that were in that kingdom, uh, a succession of lineage, and they kill them. But instead of doing that, David did just the opposite. He says, is there any left of the household of Saul that I might show kindness for Jonathan's sake? <laughs> if you look in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 32, it says by, that we're to be kind and tenderhearted one towards another, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven us. There was a blood covenant between David and Jonathan. Can I tell you, there's a blood covenant between us and Jesus Christ this morning because he loves you and he loves the little children of the world. He said, suffer the little children to come unto me for such is the kingdom of God. I'm preaching on a subject this morning I love very much and it's very near and dear to my heart and you know that it is. I think we need to love kids. I think we ought to go after them. Uh, I'm talking about we really need to go after them. Would you pray that we can do more to reach uh, these children for the sake of the gospel? Would you pray that our Bible school every year will grow bigger and bigger and bigger? Would you pray for our Sunday school that it will grow and grow and grow as we get closer to the Lord? I appreciate the men's rally. Uh, the other night we had over 500 men gathered together in one place for the glory of God. And as they sang hymns of praise, the piano dropped out, and all you could hear is the harmony and the melody uh, throughout the service. And th those men singing praises unto their God. It was heavenly, folks. It was absolutely heavenly. By the time Brother Pope got up to preach... He was filled with the Holy Spirit of the Lord. Uh, oh, my. If you couldn't preach after all that, there was no preach in you. But I will say this. David was searching not only for that, that answer uh, to God uh, uh, of who it was that, uh, that was of the lineage of Saul. The Bible teaches us in Luke's gospel, chapter number, I believe it is 14, verse number 24, go in the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be full. You know what's a command? that we fill this house every Sunday. Next Sunday is Don't Break My Heart Sunday. Have you signed up somebody yet? We need to, folks. We need to. Before the church is over, ushers, we need to get those hearts back out and give everybody one because it's not going to matter uh, sitting on that table out there if we've got so many hearts uh, cut out and nobody's taking them to sign anybody up. Amen. This little boy only had one chance, and it was David. This little boy had only one chance, and it was the king. And the king, praise the Lord, had mercy on his soul. And had it not been for the king of glory, we wouldn't be sitting in here today. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord for God and his goodness this morning. Three cheers for Jesus today and his love. And thank God for the bus kids. I love what Brother Howell said. He said, I'll take the bus kids. He had 400 businessmen in his church that walked out on him. They said, either give up those buses or we're gone. He said, I'll take the bus kids. I'll take the bus, kids. And you know, God blessed that work, became the greatest and the largest Sunday school in the world. Can you imagine what God can do with people? It doesn't matter what you have. Don't, you, don't be worried. Look, quit looking at the financial reports. You're looking at the circumstances. Look at Jesus Christ, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Listen, he can keep those buses filled up with fuel. Amen. He can keep the treasures of our church full, but we've got to look unto him. We've got to bless his holy name, amen? So he was crippled by a fall, number two. He was sought by the king. Luke 19 and 10, the Bible says that Jesus Christ, the son of man, hath come to seek and to save that which was lost. David sent Ziba. Ziba, Ziba was the first bus captain, amen? I appreciate these captains that go every Saturday knocking doors for Jesus, building a team together on their bus that go out and to canvas the area, looking for those lost ones that need to come to church, amen, and get saved 
by the power of God. Can you understand that God has commissioned all of us to do the same thing, whether you're involved in the bus ministry or not? Did you know it doesn't say preachers go into all the world or deacons go into all the world or bus captains go into all the world? It says, go ye church into all the world and preach the gospel to who? Every creature. I heard one preacher say it this way. We're just preacher. We're just creature reachers. Amen? We need to be going into all the, the world. And I don't understand why uh, people who've been saved by the grace of God can't figure out after reading the Bible one time through. Amen. Are you still reading the Bible? That we're supposed to be going to people. We're supposed to be telling uh, the, the old, old story of Jesus and his power uh, to save. I don't understand why it is that if Jesus came looking for us, we shouldn't go looking for another. Sure we should. <laughs> Zeba went looking. Uh, he, was on a, he was on an assignment from the king. He was, he was an ambassador. And we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ, are we not? I mean, I know all people are without excuse. I know the table, uh, the commandments of God are written on our heart. But how'd you like to be out there and never heard a clear presentation of the gospel? I said, how would you like to be out there lost and undone without Jesus Christ? Aren't you thankful for these workers of our church? Aren't you thankful they stay busy out on the street talking to young people, talking to people, anybody, anywhere, anytime that'll get up on their bus? We, stop, we see people walking down the road and we'll stop and we'll ask them if they want to go too to church. Sometimes they'll take us up on it. <laughs> you say, all you got's a taxi service, preacher. All you got's a babysitting service, uh, preacher. Yeah, but what you don't understand, you ain't got enough spiritual insight to blow the fuzz off a peach. Amen. What you don't realize is once they get here and they get under the word of God, God can save their soul because everybody's got a soul. Amen. I'll take the bus kids. Y'all ever get rid of me? We're going to start a children's church and all we'll have is bus kids. I love them. I'm sorry. Y'all forgive me. I, I'm partial. Amen. I love them to death. Somebody's got to love them. Hey, little old, little old Mephibosheth was down in Lodabar. He needed loved. Don't you think we ought to love everybody? I said Jesus and his love uh, makes you love everybody, doesn't it? Amen. Did you know it only takes a spark to get a fire going? Did you know just a little excitement, just a little enthusiasm to do what we know we're supposed to be, to do, to be motivated to do what we're supposed to do? All of us know what we're supposed to do. But thank God for the ones that actually apply the things that we know what we ought to do. Amen. Hey, Zechariah 4 and 10 says this, for who hath despised the day of small things? You say, preacher, that's so simple. That's so elementary. Getting a van or getting a bus, getting a Sunday school class, filling it up. Oh, my. Oh, that happened way back in the 60s. I got people who ridicule me and they say, he's locked back there in the 60s somewhere. Well, let me just clue you in. Back in the 60s, most every Baptist church had a bus ministry, including the downtown Baptist church. I'd like to be locked back there when we were really having revival, amen? When every church was looking for a lost sinner, I think we've lost our way somewhere along the way, and our country's in terrible shape today because we're bigger than our britches anymore. We've gotten too big for our britches, and, and we think we're up, uh, up high and mighty, and, and, and we've gotten too big. And a bird never goes too high that it won't come down. Amen. We're going to have to pay for that. Why? Because we've lost our tears for a lost soul. Christ receiveth the sinful men. I love that song uh, in our song books, don't you? Hey, Jesus didn't despise the little child who had the five loaves and the two fishes. He worked a miracle in his little life, and so can he for these children. Amen. Number three this morning, Z carried by the servant. Zeba uh, carried uh, by the servant. Oh, listen, uh, tell them the king. When you go out and you tell people about Christ, tell them the king has sent you. Amen. Woo! Tell them you're an ambassador. Somebody ask you what you do for a living, tell them I'm an ambassador. I'm an ambassador of a foreign country. Hello. <laughs> this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. If heaven's not my home, oh Lord, what will I do? You know the song. You know it's true this morning also. Amen. And look, we were going to go and live in a king's house one day. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also me. My father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And the Lord has something very special for every one of us. Listen, let's get people saved. Let's get people baptized. Let's get people ready and fit for heaven. Why? The Lord, the King of glory, soon will be coming for us. Just as he did little Mephibosheth. Can you imagine? Can
Can you imagine the royal chariot uh, coming up to the, the edge of that house and picking up that little old boy? Here he is in tattered garments. Here he is in a poor situation. Here he is, and he's going to be taken to the king's house. Can you imagine the scene? The prancing horses once they get to the, the palace, the dromedaries, the camels, the officers, the attendants, the gold, silver, the royal palace. Can you imagine the officers of the court? Can you imagine all that's going on? Can you imagine all that's going on that God is preparing for us to actually go to the king's palace one day? Boy, what a great picture of heaven. You know, he's not willing that anyone should perish, even these little ones. Oh, he's not willing that even one should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Praise the Lord. Amen, preacher. You say, what got a hold of you, preacher? The Lord. Mephibosheth, listen, uh, Mephibosheth may be uh, someone's question, uh, questioning his motives or not, or questioning Zeba's motives of even picking up this child. Well, he's just wanting to put another notch in his belt. Well, he's just wanting numbers. That's all that church down there wants is numbers. Yeah, behind every number is a soul. People have talked about us and run us down and smeared our testimony and all over the place. Why? Because they know they're not doing it and they know we're doing it. Furthermore, with the grace of God and the help of God, we're going to keep on doing it for the glory of the Lord. God loves these children. I said, let me say it again. God loves the little children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they're all precious in the sight of God. You ought to pray for them every day. You ought, look, if you can't get on a bus, you ought to uh, ask the bus captain, can I pray for your children? Give me the names of your kids. So I'm getting too feeble and too old to get on a bus, Pastor. Okay, can you pray? God loves kids. I was crippled by a fall and you were crippled by a fall. And look, if we don't get them saved, they're going to be crippled by a fall throughout all of eternity. We need to get them saved. I said we need to get them saved. Who else is going to love on them? Who else is going to give them the gospel if we don't? Amen. Praise the Lord. Everywhere I go, sometimes somebody will come up to me at Walmart and say, Preacher, you're the one who saved me. I mean, scores of them will say, I can't go to the Walmart with my wife. We'll get an hour and a half will go by. We'll still be talking to people. You're the one that saved me. And, and I, I, I don't want to correct them, but it wasn't me. I'm just, I'm just the old uh, mail carrier. I'm just, I'm just carrying the mail. I'm just giving them the news, amen? Jesus is the one that saves them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But, you know, isn't that wonderful about the testimony of our church? Talk if you will. We're still getting out the gospel. Praise the Lord. The gospel, the good news, how beautiful are the feet of them who preach the gospel of peace. What I have is real this morning. How about you? My God is real. I think I'll sing. He's real in my soul. My God is real for I can feel him in my soul. How about you? Now look, while the average Christian is just looking for the, the next tingle or thrill or roller coaster ride or, or, or going to the next new neighborhood or getting a new car or such, can I tell you? The greatest thrill in the world is to see some lost soul saved by the grace of God. Nothing will thrill your soul like Jesus Christ. Some of you are whining when you ought to be shining for the glory of God. Come out of your pity party. Get out of that little spell of depression you're in. And shake that off with the power of God. Become a soul winner for Jesus. Become a volunteer for Jesus. Amen. Number four, he was brought to the palace. I say this was the first bus route. Amen. Hey, don't give up on these old buses. They're old iron horses. Don't give up on them. Hey, do you believe in the bus ministry? Many of you stood today in honor of the bus ministry that somebody had brought you to church at some point or another. Hey, do we have the character to keep it up? It takes hard work, man. I'm talking about it takes hours on Saturday. It takes hours on Sunday. It takes hard work, but it is worth it. D.L. Moody said this. There was a man uh, uh, that uh, uh, asked Brother Hiles, he said, when are you going to get rid of those things over there, those old buses? He said, all there are is dripping uh, oil all over the parking lot, our new parking lot over there. He said, D.O. Moody had hundreds of thousands to come to church. And he didn't have no buses. And Brother Hiles said, well, he didn't have buses, but he had drawn carriages. And he said, but don't you realize the, that oil stinks? He said, well, it smells a whole lot better than what was on the parking lot of Brother Moody's uh, church. 
he was bringing kids in covered wagons. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All over Chicago. Can you imagine? Look, we can look. We got cities that don't have a scriptural church. What are we going to do? We better send them a bus. I said, there's there's not a soul winning church. There's churches all around, but there's look. We may need we need to target one of these cities that don't have a soul winning church. There's a big difference, you know. Churches, churches everywhere, but like water, not a drop to drink. And we need to give them the word of God. Water that shall never, they'll never thirst again. Number five, they, uh, this man by the name of Mephibosheth, he was made to be one of the king's sons. Woo! And to think, he was sitting at the king's table. Through a, uh, he was sitting there, and look, even though he was crippled by a fall, even though he was handicapped, when he sat at the king's table, no one could tell he was handicapped. No one could tell he was crippled. Why? Because that covering... That beautiful tapestry, that, that garment, that, 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 that robe of righteousness that covered the table, covered up over his lame feet. Nobody could tell he was crippled. Did you know when we get to heaven by the grace of God, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, will cleanse us from all of our sin. We'll all sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We'll sit down with the elders, the Bible says, and we'll feast eternally, continually throughout all of eternity, and no one will remind you of your past because your past will be gone to be covered in the blood. Amen. Won't it be wonderful there? You ever seen a, the table spread the marriage supper of the Lamb and it just goes off into infinitum. It just eternally, it's just eterni eternally uh, going out there. Can you imagine how many will sit down and as we sit down, the King of glory himself will serve us. As he served the disciples and he washed their feet, you remember what a true servant's heart. <laughs> Can we be like Jesus? Boy, it's hard, isn't it, preacher? It is very difficult, but his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I want to thank God for all those that we didn't even mention this morning who's been involved in the bus ministry. I know Sister Willie Timms was involved in it, picking up people for Bible school and Sunday school and others we did not mention. But can I tell you, whether you're unmentioned here, it doesn't matter. One day you'll be mentioned. One day there will be a reward for you, all those who put their faith in Christ and who've worked uh, to serve him after you've been saved. Amen. I'm not a Spurgeon. I'm not a Moody. I'm not a Howe. But listen to this. Verse number 11 says, I'm one of the king's sons. <laughs> Sometimes I sign my name and I put 2 Samuel 9 and verse number 11, one of the king's sons. I'm not much. But you know what? I'm like the little boy who had the five loaves and two fishes. I've brought to Jesus everything I've got. He's taken my life. What about you? He's using my life. What about you? Lastly, and I say this lastly, he ate at the king's table, the fine linen cloth. No one could see his crippled condition, but as far as the king is concerned, he's as good as all the rest of them. Amen? Not one person better than the other. Not one person better than the other in this church this morning. We're all covered by the linen, by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The robe of righteousness one day will cover you. What covered Adam and Eve in the garden? The glory of God. They were naked, but they were covered by the glory of God. What will cover us in heaven, preacher? We won't have to have Jordan, and we won't have to have Nike, and we won't have to have all those Adidas. We won't have to have all that. We'll be covered by the glory of God. We'll trade in these threads for the robes of righteousness. Oh, listen to me. God cannot see your sins. If you've been saved by his wonderful grace this morning, they're all covered. They're all covered. And your invitation to heaven this morning, if you've never been saved and covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, one day you can be as one of the king's sons. You can sit and feast at the table continually. One thing about Zeba, did you understand this? Zeba... Uh, here he was, the servant of the king. And the Bible says that he had uh, uh, this uh, man by the name of Zeba. Uh, he had uh, uh, children, many children. And uh, Zeba uh, sent there. He had many servants. Oh, yes. And it was said of him that uh, he will eat. Zeba said, you can eat at my table. You can eat at the king's table uh, eternally. Praise the Lord for that. That's a type of heaven, folks. Amen? You know, there's kids all over the Gulf, Gulf Coast who are not going to receive the invitation to heaven because we haven't offered them the invitation to heaven. Huh. Is there someone this morning who will surrender their life and say, Pastor, I know I can do more to serve the Lord. I know there's more that I can do. There's a big day coming up uh, here at the end of this month or next Sunday. Uh, oh, uh, preacher, there's something I can do to get someone to this church next Sunday to get under the word of God. Oh, yes. Well, let's do that. God, listen, he's in the business. Uh, Jesus said uh, when 
when he was 12 years old. You say, how, how young can it, uh, how old do I have to be in order to be in the Lord's work, his service? Huh? Jesus was 12 and he said, I must be about the Father's business. Uh, in 1972, I was only 10 years of age, but I was a junior bus captain. Are you listening to me? My mama was the captain. And she, she made me the, bus, the junior bus captain. I thought I was as big as anybody on that bus. I tell you what my job was. I ran up to the door and, and, and I knocked on the door and I woke them up. I knocked on the window if I had to. Hey. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 44 years ago. It's still good today as it was back then. Go ahead and make fun of me if you want to and say, uh, Preacher Crane's locked in the 60s and said, I'm locked up. I'm fixed. My heart is fixed. I'm not changing my mind. I will always love the little children. Amen. When somebody says something like that and, and they're trying to down someone else because they're serving the true Lord and true God of heaven, I'm going to say this, they're not serving the Lord probably. No, people that are busy don't have time to run anybody else down. They're too busy serving the Lord, amen. Now, God wants to rescue the perishing and care for the dying. Now, look, he wants to rescue these children, not because they're anything special, not because we are a, a lineage of royalty, no, <clears throat> like Mephibosheth was, but you know what? It's for Christ's sake, the blood covenant that was made 2,000 years ago, much like Jonathan and David made a covenant. Jesus Christ has made a covenant with us. He said, come, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. He said, come, all those that come unto me, I will in no wise cast them out. Praise the Lord, John 6, 37. He says uh, in John uh, chapter 1, uh, verse number 11, he said that he, he came into his own, his own received him not, but to as many as received him. To them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Oh, that's just easy believism. They're just getting those kids to uh, repeat a little prayer over and over, and it don't really matter to a hill of beans. Shame on you. Shame on you. It's not hard to get saved. It's hard to live for God after you get saved. It's not hard to get saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God can take a little soul. We pray that prayer, that sinner's prayer, every Sunday coming to church. Here's what I believe by faith. You know, if we only have the faith of a grain of mustard, I believe God can take those little children and make them a better Christian than you and I. Because but the grace of God, so go I. But the grace of God, I could have been locked down in Lodabar. I could have been one of those ones who never had opportunity to come to know the Lord. Had it not been for that little country church up in Center Point, Arkansas, my spiritual window, amen, my granddaddy got saved and called to preach in that little church. Half-time church, but they produced a lot of full-time Christians. They didn't have to have a bus ministry because you know why they walked to church. They walked to church. I wonder how many people would walk to church today. God forgive us. We need to go by there and remind them Jesus loves them. Well, I just don't believe. Da, 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 da. And if they don't come, you know, some churches have this kind of idea. What is to be will be fatalistic. Fatalistic. Calvinistic. If they don't come, I don't have to tell them. They know where the church is. Now, what kind of attitude is that? What would Jesus do? He saw the multitudes. He had compassion. The shortest verse in all the Bible, John eleven thirty five. 35. Jesus wept. He wept over his friend Lazarus when he passed. And he wept over the multitudes. He had compassion on them, the scripture says. That's all I'm asking you today is, this is heart week. This is heart month. This is love month. Can we ask God to enlarge our heart for more souls this year, please? Could we reach out to anybody, uh, anywhere, anytime, and say, by the grace of God, are you saved? Do you know for sure you're going to heaven? Do you have your tickets punched and your bags packed? Are you ready? I'm saying that to you this morning. Would you help me? Would you help me? And time's almost done. Lowe's thinks the sun. Souls are dying. Men are crying. When the lost at any cost. When's the last time you opened your Bible and showed somebody how to be saved? Come on now. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Maybe we should pray. Maybe you're working on the wrong group. 
Maybe the adults you're talking to are too hard-hearted and you've given up. Maybe you need to start talking to the little children. Maybe you need to start talking to the teenagers. They'll listen to you. Amen? Let's bow our heads, shall we? Father, thank you for the message.